Welcome to part 2, lecture 11, on the topic of secondary metabolites and plant defence. This topic is part of the plant physiology subject, which is a component of both the agricultural and the viticultural degree programmes that are offered at the institution of NMIT. Please refer to the recommended reading from Taze and Zeiger chapter 13 for complementary information. Please ensure that you have watched part one of this topic before listening to the rest of this lecture. My name is Dr Nikki Cooley. In this lecture we will look at the secondary metabolites, tannins, nitrogen containing compounds, the alkaloid group, the cyanogenetic glycosides and glycosinolates, and the non-protein amino acids. Tannins are phenolic polymers. There are two categories of tannins, condensed and hydrolyzable. Condensed tannins formed from polymerization of flavonoid units. They are commonly found in woody plants and can be hydrolyzed by strong acids into anthocyanins. Hydrolyzable tannins contain certain acids such as gallic acid and simple sugars. They are smaller than condensed tannins and they easily hydrolyze with dilute acid. Tannins are toxins that can reduce the growth of many herbivores. They act as feeding deterrents to a variety of animals. For example, cattle and deer will avoid plants or part of the plant where the tannin concentration is high. Mammals tend not to eat unripe fruits and unripe fruits contain high tannin levels. As a rule, crops generally produce fewer secondary metabolites than native plants. Exceptions, humans prefer tannins in apples, blackberries, tea and grapes. Tannins in red wine block the formation of the signaling mo molecule endoethylene 1 that makes blood vessels constrict. Associated with the health benefits of red, red wine in reducing heart disease. Another group of secondary metabolites are those described in the nitrogen containing compounds. Plants synthesize a large variety of secondary compounds which have nitrogen as part of their structure. These groups include the alkaloids, the cyanogenetic glycosides, the glycosinolates and the non-protein amino acids. In the rest of this lecture we are going to look at examples of these nitrogen containing compounds and some of their roles in plant defence. The alkaloids are a large family of about 15,000 nitrogen containing secondary metabolites. They are found in approximately 20% of vascular plant species. Most alkaloids are alkaline at pH 7.2 in the cytosol and pH 5 to 6 in the vacuole. The nitrogen is proteinated, thus positively charged and water soluble. The table on your screen from the Plant Physiology recommended textbook lists major types of alkaloids, their amino acid precursors and some well-known examples of these. For example, nicotine, which is a stimulant and a depressant and a tranquilizer, is part of the alkalide group pyrolidine. This is perhaps one of the most famous alkaloids. Another example um, of alkaloids is morphine, which is used as an analgesic. This comes from the um, alkaloid class, the isoquinolines. The most fun common functional role of alkalides is as a defense mechanism against herbivores, especially mammals. Large numbers of livestock deaths are caused by the in ingestion of alkaloid-containing plants. In the US, many gra grazing animals are poisoned each year by the consumption of such plants as lupins, larkspur, and ground seal. There may be a number of factors at play here. Domestic animals have not been bred for natural selection characteristics. Some livestock actually prefer the alkaloid containing plants. The following slide shows images of uh, some of these uh, poisonous plants containing alkaloids. 
Humans have a complex relationship with alkaloids. Many of our alkaloids are toxic to humans, but some, such as morphine and codeine, are used in medicine, while others are stimulants, such as cafe, nicotine and, co and cocaine. The mode of action of alka alkaloids are variable. Many will interfere with the nervous system, while others may affect the membrane, membrane transport or protein synthesis. When some plants are crushed, cyanogenetic glycosides and glycosinolates are readily broken down to give off poison. Sugars are liberated and hydrogen cyanide is released. In sorghum, for example, the cyanogenetic glycoside is in the vacuoles, while the enzymes are in the cytosol. This compartmentalization prevents decomposition. When the leaf is damaged during the herbivore feeding, the cell contains mix and hydrogen cyanide forms. Another example of cyanogenetic glycosides uh, occur in the tubers of cassava, which is a staple food in many countries. Traditional processing removes a large fraction of the glycosides, however, chronic poisoning does still occur. Conventional breeding and genetic engineering approaches are being used to reduce the glycoside content. It may not be desirable because the substances are probably responsible for the pest resistance of stored cassava. Let us now talk about the non-protein amino acids. Plants and animals use the same 20 amino acids in proteins. However, many plants, small seeded legumes such as alfalfa or lucerine, also produce unusual amino acids that are not incorporated into proteins. They are present in the free form and used in defense. For example, canavina is a very similar to arginine if mistakenly incorporated into a protein, a non-functional protein results. Several non-protein amino acids have been linked to toxicity in uh, ruminants fed with certain fodder legumes. At the end of this lecture, I would like you to please watch the two following YouTubes. The URL links are on the page and can be also found in Moodle for your convenience. The first is on plant defense, and the second video compares both animal and plant defences in order for you to have a comparison between these two systems. This brings us to the end of the lecture on secondary metabolites and plant defence. I hope that you now have a comprehensive overview of plant defence, that you appreciate that this is an exceptionally large group of compounds and many of these compounds have specific roles in the plant defence. I hope from these lectures you are able to give some examples of the functional roles of secondary metabolites.